of teens and tweens, we do everything we can to keep our kids hanging with the right crowd. Right, that's not always easy, and there are many topics that parents of teens and tweens should really be on top of, and one of them is dating abuse. Today we're speaking with Daisy Whitney, author of the new novel, The Mockingbirds. Daisy, welcome to Mommy Cast. Hi, thanks for having me. This is kind of a tough subject for a lot of, especially for parents to talk about, but it's dating abuse. Um, and it's one of those things, I mean, there's so many things to, to, to worry and think about, you know, as your children get more independent and start going off and being with, you know, themselves and their friends and you're not around to kind of help and protect them. Dating abuse, I think, is one of the things that a lot of people don't even think about. And if they do think about it, they don't want to talk about it. So talk to us a little bit, why don't we start the conversation here and talk to us a little bit about, about what dating abuse is, first of all. A lot of times with teenagers, they wind up in a relationship that can be you know, verbally abusive or, or more so than that. And in the research that I've done and talking to folks at, at RAIN, which is the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, um, it's a lot of times when a teenager is in that type of relationship, you know, really kind of the key warning sign is that isolation. If they're with somebody, you know, that is potentially abusive, you know, that person often wants to kind of take up all of their time. And I said, well, but how is that different from the beginning of any normal teenage or love relationship when you kind of want to be with that person all the time? And the key as a parent to look for is just if that continues and that kind of permeates the relationship, this sense of, you know, the person that your teen is with, you know, doesn't want them to be with their friends, doesn't want them to spend time with you, just kind of, you know, it's just very all like one-on-one -on -one and just with that person. That's just, that's kind of a potentially big warning sign that parents should be looking for to see if the relationship is crossing lines. Whitney, by then it's too late. Then what do you do? <laughs> I mean that well yeah our, our kids are going to make mistakes our kids are going to get in relationships with bad people it's going to happen I think the key is if you if you see something like that happening uh, definitely experts say try to encourage uh, your your kids uh, your teenagers existing friends to, to spend more time with them try to encourage your kid to spend time with you know friends they've had their whole life and and you know to talk to you about what's going on but to talk to you about it and, and I guess the key is as a parent it's best probably to talk to them in a way that's where you're not forbidding them yet from seeing this person because you know yeah, what happens with say. parents we forbid our kids they want it more oh, no. so worried about a relationship a soft touch is probably the best way to start and really just encouraging them to be with their friends and then you get to the point where hopefully your teenager will actually talk to you about what's going on and you know you can help you can help them get through it, get over it. You can help direct them to resources if they need counseling, if they need to see somebody uh, who specializes in that area. Um, in addition to the isolation, though, there are other warning signs to kind of watch out for, and I think maybe we should outline some of those as well. Um, Definitely, th things that parents should really keep an eye on are if you know if your teenager is starting to pull out of extracurricular activities, things that they really enjoy, they're not doing as much of anymore. You know, truancy, skipping school, failing grades. I mean, these are the signs too of scary things as well, like potentially drug abuse or alcohol abuse. Um, but there are also similar signs. You know, if 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 some kind of you know dating violence or dating abuse is going on as well. So I just think it's important to you know kind of have your ear to. The ground in the house and really pay attention to the behavior and to know your kid and another thing in addition to the warning signs the key thing is to just be creating an environment from very early on of uh, being able to talk about things and also of you know letting your kids know that you believe in them and 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 that they are loved because self-confidence and self-esteem are, are kind of some of the most important traits in helping uh, helping a teenager combat and potentially avoid being in a bad relationship. One of the things that I've learned as my children have gotten older is is the correlation of things that you teach them from a very young age and how that kind of sets the tone and the pattern for, for what goes on as they get older. And I think with regard to dating abuse, which is, a, I think, a form of bullying, which, you know, bullying is one of the things that the elementary schools are really, in our area at least, are really kind yeah. of going after. My kindergartner came home and said that they came in to talk to him about bullying. Yeah, week. and I think there's, you know, standing up for yourself and learning to say exactly what you are feeling and for other people to listen, for the other kids to learn how to listen to what's being said to them. So if 
you know, you're out on the playground and you are teasingly pulling a little girl's hair mm -hmm. and she says, no, don't do that, stop it, that you learn to listen to that and abide by that because that is respecting her wishes for how she's being treated, which fast forward to high school and dating when you get into these situations where you have, you know, a, a boy who's wanting to do this and the girl is saying no, he learned early on to respect right. her wishes for how she's being treated. Right. Absolutely. When my son is 10 and my daughter is five and you can kind of see that there are opportunities at this age too, as you know, as you're aware, just to kind of set those ground rules for both of them to understand personal space and to understand if, if she says, don't pull my skirt, that means stop. Or she says, don't touch me or punch me or whatever. But when you have, it's, it's, it's easy to, I mean, it's really easy within the home to teach these lessons if you have sons and daughters, which I do. I have um, boys, I have boy, girl, boy, girl, boy. So girls are sandwiched between boys and it's given me a, a, a unique opportunity to really teach the boys what's appropriate and the other thing we teach the boys is you know when if the boys get rough with the girls and you know hit on them or wrestle them or something my husband will say do you want your sister's husband to do that to her and they were like no and he said well what you're doing right now is teaching your sister how she's allowed to be treated and if you wouldn't want somebody else doing it to her, you shouldn't do it to her either. So we have these unique opportunities at home to kind of teach some of these lessons. But, you know, I always, they're teaching But you know what? Don't put all of the onus on the boys because there are plenty of girls oh, no. out there who are abusing boys. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. But I'm they just do saying. it. My girls do it verbally. <laughs> you know, and I think verbal abuse is just as yeah. hefty as, you know, it physical is. abuse. And, and, um, and I do think that there are a lot of girls out there who are, um, for whatever reason, um, insecurity or, you know, yes. they don't have a father figure in their home. They don't really understand how that whole thing plays. And they go out and they glom on to a boy mm -hmm. and try to control his life. And yep. I think, you know, boys need to learn how to stand up for that too. Yep. And I think sometimes we, we, we teach our boys to be kind and polite and Almost courteous to a fault. And to a fault. Yeah. And they need to learn how to kind of stand up for themselves as well. Right. I absolutely. I mean, it absolutely goes both ways. I'm glad you brought that up because you're right. I mean, we, it's, it's it's the onus shouldn't be on one gender in terms of how to behave or how to respect the other. I mean, these things we have to remember can always go both ways. And any time, any type of scary situation can always go both ways. And I think too, I mean, we're talking about these challenging topics, you know, bullying, dating abuse, these sorts of things. And, you know, for parents who have younger kids, that can seem so foreign and so far and off. Scary. We still have these yeah. you know, innocent children yeah. who love princesses. But the fact is, you're right. We can really set the agenda and create the environment from such an early age when we're dealing with even more complicated issues. Right. Absolutely. Totally Thank agree. you so yes. much. This has been really educational. I look forward to the feedback we get from our viewers. Right. Thank you, Daisy.